Welcome to a special holiday edition of the GGB Podcast, the industry's first and longest-running podcast now in our 17th year. I'm Roger Gross, the publisher of GGB, and this week we sit down with Brant Iden, the recently appointed Vice President of Government Affairs for Fanatics Betting and Gaming, on how he got a bill passed when he was a senator in Michigan legalizing both sports betting and iGaming. Today's podcast is sponsored by IGT, where the cat's out of the bag. IGT's Prosperity Link wins gold and is named Best Slot Product by GGB's Gaming and Technology Awards. Get this top performer on your floor. Learn more at IGT.com slash Prosperity Link. Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast. My guest today is Brent Iden, the uh, the uh, um, commercial operator for uh, for uh, U.S. Sport Radar, right? Yeah, uh, head of government affairs uh, for Sport cool. Radar. Okay. That's right. Close that's enough. right. Okay. Close enough. Okay. All these different titles these days. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> just give me my simple title, and I'm happy. You know. So uh, you, know, you were you were a uh, legislator in Michigan when uh, when the uh, the legislation we put together there you were one of the sponsors of it and a lot of people say Michigan really got it right you know I mean uh, you know I'm from New Jersey and I think New Jersey got it pretty close to being right but uh, but you guys got it right off the ground and you did sports betting and I gaming at the same time how, how did you how did you uh, how, how did you get educated to begin with and how did you spread that word among, amongst the fellow legislators yeah well first off yeah thanks I, I like to think that the Michigan model is is the best model yeah. but you know I'm a, <laughs> you know, biased. Almost biased. I'm like, yeah exactly I'm a little jaded I guess right. uh, no but Michigan has worked out very well for a couple different reasons as you mentioned you know, we've got iGaming as well as sports betting. We also have tribal interests and right. commercial interests there and a lottery, and we were able to make it work. My interest in the bill actually stems from just my interest in the gaming industry to begin with. Yeah. I've always been a player. Okay. Uh, I was at the craps table last night. I didn't do very well, but I was at the craps table last night. And um, so I, I, when I had sort of seen what other states had done, Pennsylvania had passed iGaming right. when I was in the legislature. I had seen that. We knew that, you know, the Supreme Court was going to take up PASPA. And I thought, let's see if we can put something together. And I really believe, and I was uh, having a conversation with some legislators yesterday about this, you know, pushing this boulder up the hill, as I like to call it, right. it's tough. So you might as well do it once because educating lawmakers on this issue is a big lift. Right. And getting lawmakers to vote for gaming issues can be difficult. Sure. And so I said, you might as well do it all at once. And the Gaming Act of Michigan had not been touched in 23 years. Right. And I don't know if it'll be touched for another 23. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, as I said, I think you got it right. And I think the real complicated thing there was, was the tribal issue. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, every everywhere we see... Uh, in the U.S., whenever they're talking about sports betting, the tribes want to have a monopoly. You know, so we see it in, in California. You know, we we see it in Florida. Yep. You know, it's all over the place. But you guys figured it out. Was that because they didn't really have monopoly in, to start with? You know, that's a really good point. Uh, so the three commercial casinos have been in Michigan since the 90s. They right. were voted in constitutionally. And so they've all had to work together for a long time. Right. And there is, there had been a lot of long-term relationships there. Right. So having these conversations between the commercials and tribes became easier because they knew each other. People, sure. they, they right. could work together. They right. had been working together. Um, but, it, of course, it wasn't easy. Of trying course, to get, right. <laughs> yeah, of course, it wasn't trying. easy. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. And and what you're seeing now play out in other states, I really believe it's some, it can be sometimes a lack of communication and sure. trust. Yeah. There was a trust level built between the commercial industry and the tribal industry that was able to, to put a breeding ground together sure. to make this thing work. Right, right. Uh, and, it, you know, it can happen. We've seen it in Arizona and Connecticut as well. Right. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, it's tough. It's certainly tough. Sure. Well, did were all all the tribes united behind one strategy, or did they all, you know, did you have to kind of kind of corral them? And uh... <laughs> <laughs> we got we pretty much got them all together, except for a couple yeah. that really didn't have any opposition. They right. just weren't. They, you know, their position is well, we're not major gaming tribes, so we're not going to stay. You know, right. but our bigger tribes came, led the conversation, worked with the commercials, and we put a we put a great bill in place, which allows commercial operators to partner with tribes and have market access, right. basically. So, you know, the uh, the major commercial operators negotiate those commercial agreements with the tribe separately, yeah. and then they can go through application to the Michigan Gaming Control Board and participate in the state. Or tribes can go it alone, which we've seen both happen. Right. In the state. Sure. Right. Right. So, um, you know, a lot the states that have legalized sports betting have always approached it like 
let's just get sports betting done, and then we'll think right. about our gaming. Right. Uh, but you guys went went right for the, for the for the meat of the. We, d- the we did. Here. <laughs> I mean, what, how did how did that work? How did, did you have to convince everybody? So it, it certainly it certainly was, and I'll tell you, we actually started with an iGaming bill. Yeah. This was before PASPA had been revealed, and so the thought process was, well, shoot, let's just take these games that everybody's playing inside the casino, and put them online, right, yeah. make a little bit of revenue, puts a, puts a regulatory framework around it, uh, and then in the course of all that. Supreme Court took up PASPA. PASPA was overturned, and we thought, let's make this let's make this a larger bill because yeah. the sports piece was was what most legislators were more comfortable. With. Sure, right, you know the right. comfort the comfortable piece sure. was sports betting. Yeah. They were familiar with that. They always my uncle was a bookie. Somebody would say, yeah, I get right, these yeah, stories, you know, right? right? Sure. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I'm I'm around Detroit, you know, so there are quite a few bookies yeah, around right. there. For sure, <laughs> and. Um, but the iGaming piece was definitely more difficult, and we had to put those responsible gaming safeguards in place. That was right. a lot of it. Talking yes. about what do we do for addiction? How do we uh, legislate for dollars to make right. sure that we're doing that? Because that's always the question, right? If we're right. going to be able to play slots on our mobile phone, how do we protect players? Right. And you got to do that for sports betting anyway. That's right. So. And we had to do it for sports betting anyway, right. so let's just take a big bite at the apple all at once. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, still, t- you know, today we see... Very few states that are, that are in both iGaming gaming and sports right. betting. Well, there are six now. Uh, the six now, uh, and, and some of them aren't, aren't even up and operating yet. But uh, but obviously, the ones that already approved sports betting, they're going to going to come back and look at at iGaming gaming because iGaming, gaming they make much more money on that. I mean, was that that must have been part of your your selling oh, point too, absolutely. right? Oh, and, and not only was it that iGaming has produced way more revenue than I even thought. Yeah. We've exceeded the projections that the fiscal agencies put together sure. for us, but Michigan has done so well with this model. And I think, I, to your point, Roger, which I think is really important, I think as more states look at the revenue piece and right. say, we haven't made the money we thought we were going to make in sports betting, right. and we're maybe headed towards a recession, potentially, states are going to need revenue, I think that there's going to be much more of an appetite for states to come back and look at look at I, I casino, especially states that are surrounded by. You take Indiana, sure. Illinois, they're going to look at the success of Michigan and say, we're gaming states, we could be doing this. Sure. Yeah. And so I think you're going to see more legislatures talk about iGaming, especially now that, well, soon we'll be through the elections. Right. Once, you know, election years are always difficult to move gaming. Sure, right, right. As we saw this year. Right. So another thing that that you did in Michigan was was set the the tax rates at a reasonable rate. We did. You know? I mean, when you look at Pennsylvania, their tax rate yeah, on just on sports betting was astronomical. And you don't even talk about New York, you know. <laughs> so, but you guys you guys set it at, at reasonable rates. So so the the companies that come, come in, you know, could figure out we can make money here. That's right. That's right. And you know. One thing we were able to do was we were able to keep sports betting tax rate low at that 8.4% right. because we had iGaming. Right. The iGaming is taxed at a higher rate. Sure, and it goes up to 28% based on how much you're bringing in. Right. But but the operators knew that. And right. they said, we are comfortable. We don't love it. Right. But if we have to cave, sure. because sports betting is such, those um, the margins are so minimal that really at the end of the day, the iGaming piece was able to bring in the tax revenue and right. sort of supplement the lower tax rate on sports. So we don't have to have a 51% tax rate. Sure. And, and yet we're bringing in three times the money, right? Sure, because right. It's, it's coming in from the I, iCasino part. Right, right. You know, still we see some states out there, Ohio and uh, and Massachusetts, which, which are just in the process of, of legalizing it. Uh, uh, you know, the tax rates, I know in Massachusetts it's kind of high. Uh, I'm not sure about Ohio. I can't remember what Ohio's pretty. Is. Ohio's very competitive. Yeah, Ohio's okay. very competitive, okay. which would be good. And Ohio will be an interesting market because there's going to be so many options. You know, a, sure. a Kroger grocery store, you're going to yeah, be able to right. go in and get embedded at the kiosk. So right. I can pick up a loaf of bread, some milk, and, and bet on the Bengals right. while I'm there. Right, yeah. <laughs> So, but there are some states that are bad examples, as I mentioned, Pennsylvania, New York. I New mean, York, yeah. And and sometimes when you when you look at a, a state legislator and they're saying, you know, they, they just see dollar signs when they see high tax rates. You know, well, why should we lower that tax rate when we can make more money? But and that's not really the case over the long run, right? That's right, because we need to make sure that these operators are sustainable and profitable. And right. if you tax the heck out of them, you're going to kill the golden goose before it even can get off the ground. Right. And so you really have to be, you know, careful about that. And I even think, you know, we've talked about New York here. I think the legislators in New York, especially the leaders there, Senator Adabo, uh, Assemblyman Pratlow, I think they're going to go back and take a look at that tax right. rate this right. year. And they're going to have a conversation about iGaming. So we may see something come to fruition in New York where you could have a hybrid iGaming, lower tax rate on sports betting. And I hope that cooler heads will prevail. We'll see something less than 51%. Sure, sure. <laughs> 
I know I've spoken to some operators from Pennsylvania, and they didn't like the tax rate for sports betting, but it was a requirement to get into sports betting and get into iGaming. So, That's right. So whereas where the tax rate is more reasonable, well, reasonable for Pennsylvania, but but still really high. But still, you know, they got into sports betting just to get into iGaming. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, there's some, there'll be some overlap there. I mean, look, if you look at New York, the operators paid 51% there because they had to be in New York. Very right. sort of a similar argument. We need to be in New York. We have to figure it out. But again, those operators aren't profitable at that sure. number. Right. And they're looking to bring that number down as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, I don't know if it, it was expected that it would be revisited, but, uh, you know, they they're, they got to look at it again. They've got to look at it Nobody's going to make money on that. That's you know? right. And, and the state's yeah. not going to make money on top of yeah. that. <laughs> the only, I think the only entity making money out there right now is the state of New York. Right, right. <laughs> or, or the suppliers. That's right. <laughs> right. Speaking of which. You, uh, so so you, when you left the legislature, you, you signed on with Sport Radar. You know, great company. They've been around for a long time. Uh, why don't you explain what Sport Radar does and what you do for them? Yeah, absolutely. So it's been great. I've been with Sport Radar since I came out of the legislature. I was term limited out. Um, and it's been fantastic. So we are a supplier, we're a data supplier, and I like to say we're the engines that power sports books. Right. So we capture this data from teams, we capture right. this data, we monetize that by running it through what I call our special sauce, our algorithms, sure. kick it out the other end in forms of odds. And uh, obviously sell that to commercial operators, tribal operators, and we we are in every uh, regulated jurisdiction sure. uh, in, in the North American market and have done very well with that and are excited about the growth. We're obviously like the, like the operators. We want to see Texas come online. Sure, we right. want to see resolution in Florida. We'd love to see the ballot proposals pass in California, although I'm, I do yeah, not think don't that think that's so. going to happen. <laughs> not in there, no way. Right. But, um, you know, so it's, uh, and I, and as a supplier, I spend a lot of my time on the licensing side sure, right. and the supplier licensing side. Right, right. Absolutely. So, um, obviously, with your experience as a legislator in passing the, the bill in Michigan, you know, when you go into other states, I'm, I'm sure other legislators say, well, what should we do? And, and, you know, when you get that typical legislator thing where they see the dollar signs and the high tax rate, how do you talk them down off of the cliff? <laughs> well, I would say, yeah, that's right. I, I have, I have yeah. had these conversations. <laughs> I always like to say you have to start with regulations first. I mean, you want to, as a legislator, your job, remember, is consumer protection to protect me. Right. Why do we have seatbelt laws? Sure. Why do we, you know, stop at crosswalks? These right. sorts of things, right? This is what legislators do, and they should protect people. And if you want to protect your citizens, I always say put the protections in place because people are playing anyway. Yep. They're either playing in the offshore market, they're betting with their bookie, they're all, right. all these, and, and we want to regulate that, we want to put a stop to that, and so we start there, is the first conversation. And then secondly, I always come back and say, look, obviously the revenue is important, you're obviously looking for revenue, but you have to make it sustainable and profitable for the operators in the market. Right. And when you educate lawmakers on the small margins in the industry, and what it really means, and how some operators are, are still struggling to be profitable, sure. which is because of the promotions and other right. things and tax right. rates we've seen out there, you have to have these conversations. And so it really all starts with education and making sure that lawmakers have got the education that they need to go and convince other, you know, their colleagues, right, first sure. and foremost, to, 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 to vote for it right, is, right. is hopefully the goal. Okay, great. So one of the one of the uh, goals of, of legalizing sports betting was to de-emphasize illegal sports betting. And it doesn't appear that, that it's happened. Uh, you know, uh, I think the, the operators are leaning on the states to do it. And I don't think the states know what to do. And from what I understand... Uh, you know, even if you block somebody's website, they're up and running in two minutes in another website. I mean, so how do we stop the illegal uh, you know, sports betting? And yeah, online that games? is that is a great question that I think the industry is sort of struggling with to figure out. But we need more state attorneys generals to, right. to, to really address that issue because, you know, as much as we can focus on this at the federal level and other things, and there's some of that for sure, but sure. this is really a state-driven issue. The state right. has to want to say, look, you know, Operators come in, pay heavy license fees. Sure. Suppliers come in, pay license fees. This is a regulated industry for a reason, right. and we need to root out that illegal gaming, whether it's illegal slot machines or sports betting or right. whatever it happens to be. And states need to really step up and focus on that. And you're right, it hasn't been a priority with a lot of the other thing, you know, coming out of the pandemic and other things states are focused on, but it needs to be. Sure. But when you look at, at the level of, of uh, illegal uh, online gaming, I mean, it's still pretty high. It I mean, is high. In some it cases, is. I mean, I just saw a study. In some cases, it's, it's over fifty percent. So, how much how much tax revenue are you losing, even if you legalize gambling at that point? 
So it should be a priority for, it, for it, it, you. You would think, yeah. because that's also revenue you, the state's missing right. out on. So I would think that the state would want to step up and, and, and address that. And so I hope as you know, we get more into this industry, we see and you know become a more mature market because we're right. still you know we're st- we're not there yet. I hope that that certainly happens. Sure. So, but also the states are, are partially to blame for that too, with the high tax rate and the high That's fees. Right. Uh, you know, uh, the the, uh, the operators have to keep keep the odds higher than you'd find on an illegal site. So, absolutely, players are going to say, "Why should I bet there when I can get a, big, a better deal?" That's so. exactly right. A big player, you know, is going to look at that and say, "If I can get a half a point right. offshore, if I can get a point offshore, sure, yeah, it's, it becomes an issue." Absolutely, sure. right, right. The cat's out of the bag. IGT's Prosperity Link wins gold, named the best slot product by GGB's Gaming and Technology Awards. A top game performer since being released, Prosperity Link features the player favorite lock and respin bonus and the exciting free games bonus with either scatter or multiplier wilds. Prosperity Link will drive players to your floor with this popular game mechanics. Grab this exciting game while it's hot. Learn more at IGT.com slash Prosperity Link. So, uh, neighboring Indiana just released a study uh, that uh, I didn't get a chance to read very deeply. But, but do you think they get, this study got it right that 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 they have a real opportunity to be able to legalize iGaming gaming there as well? Yeah, and I'm I I'm really bullish on Indiana this yeah. year. I think that there's a lot of great conversations happening. I think this study is going to help ed- that education piece right. with lawmakers, and I think the industry is going to make a real concerted effort to to get iGaming gaming over over the hurdle in Indiana right. this yeah. year. And and by the way, Indiana is a great gaming state. Has sure. been, uh, yeah, brick and mortar. You know, sports has done very well in Indiana. Right. Uh, and my good friend Senator John Ford down there is going to lead the effort on this, and I think it's going to be. Uh, I, I'm very hopeful that it's successful this year. Um, I think it'd be a great win for the industry, okay. and, and of course we're going to continue on with. I think we're going to have a lot of success in, in Minnesota with sports betting this year. So you know, pivoting a little bit. Sure. I think North Carolina we're going to have some success. So there's going to be more successes in 23 than we had in 22. Okay, great. So you know, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, online poker and online gaming. Um, you're not limited to just your own state. You know, you you can uh, you can cross uh, boundaries and and accept bets from other states. Uh, you know, unlike in sports betting, which is limited by the Wire Act, you cannot leave the boundaries right. of your state. Do you think this this will catch on also at at some point? I know there's a there's already a, a network of of I poker states, Michigan included, uh, yep. you know, the, where where they get the, the database of all all the uh, poker players. Uh, uh, do you think do you think this could be expanded to include all kinds of gaming? There's even so, the, the get a you know a, big, a huge you know twelve million dollar jackpot across these, these states. You know that's interesting, and you would wonder at that point in time. I hadn't thought about that, but I think you're absolutely right, and that may drive more interest from legislators sure. as well. I mean, right. these multi jurisdictional jackpots are huge. Yeah. I mean, that's a big number, sure. uh, and you know, Michigan's now part of that as well. And we're seeing a lot of success with that. So I do think other states will join on yeah. and join in and say this is what the players want because I think the consumers that are, are you know obviously downloading the apps and playing on these apps are going to say we want to be part of that. Right. I mean, look at that huge jackpot I just read about. We, sure. we want to we want to get in on that. Right. right. <laughs> So you mentioned the states that you think might have a possibility of passing yeah. sports betting this year. How about iGaming? I mean, iGaming is, is still you know waiting to explode. You know, I it, and it is. It, yeah, it is. I would like to see more success. One of the things I'd like to see is that the industry work these two issues together, like we did in Michigan. Right. You know, work on iGaming and sports betting at the same time. One of the things that we may have done wrong was just go into these states and just focus on sports betting. You know, we should have probably been having conversations about iGaming at the same time sure, right. because now you have to go back to those legislators who just took a vote on sports betting right. a couple of years ago and ask them to now come back on it. Right. It can be tough. Sure. It, it can be tough to take another gaming vote and go back and justify it to your district and other things. And so, um, I, again, I'm hopeful in Indiana. I'm hopeful in New York we may see something. Illinois. I don't think we're going to see anything out of Iowa, but I think that I would put New York, Indiana, and Illinois as my top three picks for tough to handicap. But if I had to, those okay. would be the ones that I'd handicap for okay, I game. Great, great. Well, thanks for joining us. But uh, before you leave, I, I have to 
I, I told Brendan Busman I, I, I plug your podcast. You two are, <laughs> oh, you two well, are doing you. a really interesting podcast. Uh, explain what that's all about. Yes, so we do our uh, bi-weekly World Series of Politics, and Brendan Busman and I, we co-host that together, and we basically just cover everything gaming politics related, and right. we're all around the world. So we just did a we just did one on Brazil and Ontario, and then we pivot real quickly, and we talk about California. We do it all in 15 minutes, right. so absolutely uh, sign on and, uh, and, and uh, follow us. We'd appreciate right. that. And what's it called? World Series of Politics. Okay, great. Well, <laughs> we'll make sure you look at that on, on iTunes and uh, and all the all the Spotify's in the world. That's so, right. So well, Brad, great being on with you, Roger. Yeah, thanks Brad, for thanks having for me. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it, it's always good to sit down with you, and uh, and good luck in the and here at G2E in in the future next year. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Hope you enjoyed today's podcast, sponsored by IGT, where the cat's out of the bag. IGT's Prosperity Link wins gold and is named Best Slot Product by GGB's Gaming and Technology Awards. Get this top performer on your floor. Discover more at IGT.com slash Prosperity Link. To learn more about the legalization of sports betting and iGaming in the U.S., visit GGBmagazine.com. Subscribe to GGB News to get all the news of the gaming industry delivered to your desktop every Monday morning. Sign up at GGBnews.com and use the coupon code GGB180 for a free subscription. Don't miss a single episode of the podcast. Subscribe on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify today. So we'll see you next time on the GGB Podcast.